Okay. I'm thrilled to announce- <laughs> I'm thrilled to announce that I will be starting a- <laughs> I am excited to announce that I will be starting a- <laughs> Why does it feel so stupid to say? Oh my god, I'm actually gonna die. <laughs> What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I'm currently finishing up my third year of electrical engineering at the University of British Columbia. And starting this May, I will be starting my first engineering internship at Ontario Power Generation, which I am super excited for. But the journey to get to this internship wasn't without its roadblocks. In other words, the 100 plus jobs I applied for and the 50 plus rejections that I got in order to get this internship. And a big part of that had to do with my resume. Looking back, this resume wasn't bad, but it definitely wasn't the strongest, both in terms of what I had on it and also what I wrote for some of my points. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the resume that somehow landed me my first engineering internship, some tips for drafting or refining your resume, and what I would do differently if I were to write my resume all over again. But before we get into my resume, I just need to give a little bit of a preface for what my job hunt was like and the expectations you just set for yourself for the kind of resume that I had. Firstly, I mainly applied to electrical engineering internship positions. In other words, most of the jobs either had electrical in the job title or in the job description had electrical where it specified which disciplines it was looking for. I also applied to just over 100 jobs, received 10 interviews, which included one-way interviews and follow-up interviews, and received two job offers in the end. During my hunting process, I had two resumes that I sent out, depending on what the job description entailed. For jobs that didn't have that many technical skills and instead emphasized soft skills, I would send a quote unquote, let's say balanced resume as I have right here, which has a balance of non-technical and technical experiences and projects. But for more technical roles that specified desired technical skills, I would have a slightly more technical resume. Basically, it just traded my lifeguarding experience for a technical project. And we'll see which those were as we get into my resume in just a little bit. I do need to make a disclaimer that your job hunting experience will vary drastically depending on your experience and projects, what field of jobs you're applying for, your network of connections, and the effort that you put into your job search. This video is probably the complete opposite of a guarantee that if you follow exactly what I did, you'll receive interview requests and job offers. This video is just a look into what my resume looked like for my job hunt, showing the things that I I think may have helped me in my resume and the things that I would have done differently. And with all that out of the way, let's get into my resume. Hey, that actually rhymed. Starting with the format and the template of my resume, I use a template on Overleaf called Jake's Resume. Just search it up on Google, it's the first thing that always shows up and honestly, it's a pretty solid template. It's not flashy by any means, but it is structured very well. You can fit a lot of stuff on it. And many people that I know who have gone internships and jobs have used this template as well. So I'd highly recommend it. It may take some time for you to get used to using LaTeX, but the template is laid out in a way that you can easily edit it to your liking. And I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you'd like to check it out for yourself. In terms of the format of my resume, I've got my name and contact information on the very top of the page, followed by my education, technical skills, experience, and then projects. You can switch around or remove sections as needed depending on what you have to show and the field of jobs that you're applying for. For example, if you don't have much actual engineering work experience but you have many good projects to show off, putting the project section up higher on your resume might be a good idea. And the same goes in reverse. If you have a lot of experiences, but you're applying for a field that isn't really that conducive to having projects on your resume, maybe putting your experience up higher in your resume will be a better thing for you. Working down for the top first, we have the education section. It's nothing really notable. I've just got the university that I'm studying at, my major, and expected graduation. I've also listed how many months I was available for and when I was looking to start, as someone told me that it was a good idea to include. 
As you can also see on the side over here, I've also included my cumulative GPA. I got a lot of mixed feedback on whether I should or shouldn't include my GPA. As some people say you shouldn't include it if it's less than 80%. And some say that you should include it or else the hiring manager will think it's suspicious that it's not there. But to be honest, it's really up to your judgment. But all I will say is that in later iterations of my resume, I just ended up removing it. Moving on to the technical skills section of my resume, I do need to make a disclaimer that I personally do not have that many or that impressive technical skills to list out. But I pretty much just did my best to try to think about the tools and software that I at least somewhat knew how to use on a semi-basic level. For engineering students, think about any programming languages that you know, software or simulation tools that you've used like SolidWorks, AutoCAD, MATLAB, or Altium, or even some hardware and instrumentation tools that you've used that could be relevant to the field that you're applying for. In my resume here, I've separated my technical skills into hardware, software, and instrumentation. But after revising my resume a bit later, I combined the hardware and instrumentation categories into one category and then split up the software category into software tools that I knew how to use and then coding languages that I knew. Moving down to the experience section, as you probably could have deduced from just looking at the title of this video, I don't have any prior engineering internship experience. So I included the two things that could feasibly count as experience. The work that I've done with the engineering design team that I'm on, and also my prior experience as a lifeguard and a swim instructor. For my first experience, I have my role as an electrical sub-team member of the UBC Subbots engineering design team. In this section, I first have a bullet point about what we do in the sub-team that I'm on, followed by bullet points about what exactly I've worked on in my time here. Because this was more of a technical experience, I made sure to reference the technical skills skills that I had listed above in my bullet points. For example, I have points here referencing how I used LT Spice to simulate preamplifier behaviors and how I inspected those real world preamplifier responses using a signal generator and an oscilloscope, which I mentioned in my technical skills section. On my balanced resume, I also included a section detailing my experience as a lifeguard and a swim instructor mainly serving as a way to hit most of the soft skills keywords in jobs that are less technical in nature and mention qualities like communication and collaboration in the job description. In both of these sections, I did my best to follow the action verb task slash project and then outcome slash result framework to structure my bullet points, which is a common way to make your bullet points stronger and more impactful. For example, in this bullet point right here about me teaching swim lessons, I began my statement with the action verb conducted, followed by the task of teaching swim lessons to people of all ages, and then the result, which was significant improvements in swimming skills. Additionally, wherever I could, I did my best to include as many numbers and metrics as possible, as it gives a concrete representation of what you've accomplished. There are definitely points that I could reword to make them stronger or add more numbers here and there, but that's what the experience section of my resume looked like. Moving down to the project section, I had a mix of technical projects and also what I call a soft skill project, if you can call it that, on my resume. And I did my best to focus on the specific things and actions that I personally took for each project. The first project, if you can, call it that on my resume was the this is second year UBC engineering video series that I made last summer. For those of you who haven't watched it yet, last summer I reached out to students in each of the engineering disciplines here at UBC, interviewed them about their second year experiences, and made high quality videos for each of the programs. In this section I talked about how I coordinated, produced, and edited all of the videos and also the positive results from this project. I think this was honestly the thing that made me stand out the most in my resume, 
And I would also go out to venture to say that it was probably the strongest aspect of my resume as well. The next project on my resume is a remote controlled metal detector robot that we designed in our electrical engineering design studio course in second year. I talked about what our robot was able to accomplish, the remote that I helped to construct for the robot, and the video presentation that I led showcasing the functionality of our robot. I definitely could have shown this first bullet point right here since three lines is a little bit much for one bullet point. And also I could have probably worded, made some of these bullet points a little bit less wordy as well. So those two projects that I just talked about are on both of my resumes, the technical one and also the balanced one. But on the more technical one where I don't have my lifeguarding experience, I chose to put in the reflow oven controller project that we also did design in our second year electrical engineering design studio course. Same general premise here as the last project, but I do think that this was a little bit of a weaker section overall as I didn't really have much to talk about that was different from what I had already written down. All right, so that's the resume that landed me my first engineering internship. Honestly, looking back, there's definitely some things that I did well, some things that I would have done differently, and a lot of tips that I wish I gave myself when I was first drafting up my resume. So let's get into some of those right now. The first thing that I found really useful was using ChatGPT and other AI tools to give me ideas for how to structure my bullet points. Especially when you don't know how to word something a certain way, AI tools can definitely help you with that. Another thing that I'm really glad that I did was have a lot of people look at my resume and give me feedback on how I could improve it. I asked my friends who had job hunted before me, upper year students, my co-op advisor, and an AppSide peer coach to give me feedback. And it definitely made my resume a lot stronger. Not gonna lie, it's definitely hard to sit there and watch someone grill your resume right in front of you, but it's gonna make your resume and your application stronger in the end. And here's a little bonus tip. If you can find people who already have internships, or even better, in the field or even the company that you want to work at, ask to see what their resumes were like to get a sense of what companies are looking for in a quality candidate. One thing that I definitely wish I knew earlier before drafting on my resume was that there are a lot of conflicting opinions about almost everything related to your resume. Things like, should you put your GPA on your resume or not? Should you put periods at the end of your bullet points? Should you include this bullet point or this bullet point? Should you capitalize your technical skills? How many bullet points should you have for a certain experience? Do you need to include your address on your resume? Should you use a serif or a sans serif font? And so many other questions that I don't know the answer to, honestly. You probably will encounter quite a few inconsistencies in the advice that you get from the internet, your friends, upper years, alumni, and advisors. But honestly, in my experience of sifting through all of this, when in doubt, just go with your gut. Or what ChatGPT has to say. And lastly, one thing to note about your resume is that everything on it is fair game for interviews. So make sure you know all of the details and can personally speak about each of your experiences and your projects that you've listed on your resume. And that's the resume that got me my first engineering internship. Obviously, there are a lot of other variables that are at play when it comes to securing an internship, like how good your interview is, how you conduct yourself in a professional manner, what kind of network you have, and how proactive you are willing to be. But hopefully this will give you a good-ish baseline of what a semi-decent resume looks like. At least one that got a few interviews and a job offer in the end. Anyways, as always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.